Chris Turner's the Livestock World. We're here in Chicago, Illinois. I'm sitting here with Mr. Matt O'Donnell. He's uh, Vice President of Wealth Management with Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Uh, he's been graciously one of our corporate sponsors on Livestock World. And we really appreciate uh, his continued support and helping bring a lot of our coverage to you all across the country as we get a lot of shows, sales, and events uh, within the business. Matt, obviously, as we said, you guys have been really gracious in supporting our program. Uh, if you don't mind, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Um, and obviously, we're here in Chicago, you're uh, in the financial world, but I believe you had more of a, an ag background growing up. And if you don't mind, can you expound on that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, no, I always dreamed about living in the city, uh, but I actually grew up on a farm, corn and soybeans, and we showed cattle growing up uh, in a very small town in uh, north central Illinois, near DeKalb, Illinois. I actually graduated with 25 kids in my class, so being in a building that has I'm mean, not even sure how many, in an office that has 150 people, let alone, I don't know how many people are in this building, but um, it's a little bit different, but absolutely grew up in a small town and uh, big fan of the cattle business and uh, big fan of yours and, and what you're doing, bringing you know, the, the cattle shows to the internet and to people that can't make it, I think it's great. Um, as we said, uh, grew up in a ag background, um, certainly uh, involved now in the financial sector. Uh, here in the city of Chicago. Can you tell us about uh, how you came to be involved in this industry and what uh, sort of drew you to uh, being a financial advisor here in Chicago? Uh, actually, um, you know, growing up, uh, you know, on a farm, uh, youngest of 11, I didn't see a, a ton of potential being a, you know, being able to own my own farm. Uh, so I always dreamed about being on Wall Street or dealing with money or helping individuals with money. Uh, I'm not sure where that came from or where. I, I visited New York, I think, when I was eight years old, and, and maybe the, the dream started there. But I uh, um, went to school at Illinois in, in finance and um, just kind of kept that dream going and was lucky enough to be hired at Merrill Lynch here in the city. Was there for a couple of years, and then I've been at Morning Stanley, or actually Smith Barney. Now it's called Morning Stanley Smith Barney for twelve, um, and just you know, love what I do. You know, I help individuals with with their money and making smart investments choices, um, but obviously still have some of those you know farm roots and farm background that gives me maybe a, a little bit of difference from so a lot of the advisors in this office that grew up in suburbs or in the city. Uh, and want to keep to those roots, and that's kind of the reason why uh, I sponsored, uh, we got, you know, went into business with you guys. Certainly. Uh, with that being said, I know a lot of uh, people that grew up in 4-H and FFA that exhibited livestock growing up uh, have those type of aspirations like you did. Uh, do you have any recommendations, I guess, just in general on sort of some of the steps you took to uh, come to success uh, as far as obviously attending college and so what were some other things that you might have been involved with that uh, if you wanted to go into something like this or you wanted to be a doctor, lawyer, other type of professional that obviously you have those roots but you'd maybe like to go on and do something a little bit different. Any thoughts on uh, some things that sort of help make a positive difference in your future? Yeah, I was uh, I was just thinking about that the other day. Uh, my nephew, my godchild actually, just graduated high school and uh, I wrote in a note uh, basically just give him some advice, some Matt O'Donnell tips, which I'm sure he's, you know, he uh, received and is put in his pocket. But, uh, you know, I just told him, hey, you can, everybody can dream. You can have dreams. And uh, if you commit uh, to that dream and put your heart and mind into it, I think you can accomplish anything. And I think that's, that's what growing up on a farm is like. You know, it's not easy all the time, uh, but you just see things work out. And that's what I love about the cattle business is you, by this, you know, this little fluffy show steer, you get it home. And there's so much promise, and you're so excited. But at the same time, you got to get up at six before school to feed it or take care of it. Uh, you got to come home after basketball practice and feed it and take care of it. And then, and then all of a sudden, it you know goes through that ugly stage where it doesn't it loses all its hair. And that that's kind of life in the general. I think. Uh, you come to work every day and it's not like you're getting a new client every day, but you have to come to work and I think uh, my advice to young people that are that grow up in a small town or um, that want to do something great is is just work hard, um, but just just keep having dreams, you know, keep dreaming big, um, you know, again, if you put your heart and mind to it, 
I, I think you can accomplish anything. Right. Um, with that being said, obviously, I know you guys uh, still have some uh, involvement within the cattle industry. I know you write an article for the show circuit uh, and give some tips and so forth. Uh, I think you're sort of the, uh, the business guru, you might say, for that magazine that's certainly been one of the, uh, the leaders in the livestock industry for a long, long time. Can you talk a little about what you guys are sort of working on together there and some of the topics you cover and so forth and um, what it's like to work with the show circuit and so forth? Uh, it's great working with Roland and, and uh, the people at sh the show circuit. I mean, they really kind of let me do what I, um, what I want and write a certain article. Obviously, I have to keep in the kind of some guidelines here with, with Smith Barney. But, uh, you know, one day I was just looking through all the cattle pictures, bull pictures. I'm like, man, there's just no... Uh, there's nothing to read in here. Um, I'm not sure how many people read my article, but uh, hopefully some out there. <laughs> but um, I actually, this is a funny story. I called Roland and asked him. Uh, I told him I was Matt O'Donnell with Smith Barney, and he's like, I have no interest, and he hangs up. So I had to send him an email, tell him I, uh, what I was planning on doing, and uh, he asked me to send an article, and um, uh, I got right on it. And, and crazy enough, I think it's been five years. It doesn't seem like that long, but uh, that I've been writing an article in there, and uh, it's just kind of. I think it's um, it's kind of what I'm doing with Livestock World is just uh, maybe giving back a little bit, just uh, just you know trying to help individuals. At, at the, but at the same time, obviously, um, you know, try to if there's someone out there that that needs help financially. And uh, I can help them. I'd love to work with them. I mean, I love working with, you know, people that uh, have good, solid, you know, um, personalities and fundamentals. And I think most, you know, cattle people do. Um, they're just, just really good people. And I'm lucky enough to work with a few now. And uh, um, I think that's kind of why I do that. And that's how I got started with uh, the show circuit. Right. Obviously, um, I know you get... Uh uh, you obviously have some children now, one on the way. Um, with that being said, uh, as far as the, the Matt O'Donnell family is concerned, uh, well, we've seen you guys on the show circuit here in a few years there. Um, you know, I, I sent an email to uh, a, a good college friend of mine, Al Miller, who runs uh, Prairie View Farms, and uh, you know, they're doing some tremendous things there. And I sent him an email about my daughter's almost two, so maybe in eight years. Not that I'm sure, I don't know if I can afford his cattle, but. Uh, that maybe, you know, we live in a city now, um, but, you know, I learned so much growing up, um, you know, raising cattle. Um, you know, my dad passed away when I was nine, and my brothers and mom did, did so much for me. And it was just such a, a way to, to learn about yourself, push yourself, you know, like I said, getting up at, you know, seven o'clock and rinsing a steer before you go to school or you know we didn't have a cooler we just had fans back then but uh, um, it's such a, a, a great way to to grow up and um, if, uh, if I can have my daughter do that maybe the future kid do that I, I think it'd be pretty cool right uh, obviously you can't go wrong with Alan Miller certainly they're very good they've got a, a phenomenal program and uh, they certainly produce lots and lots of champions and uh, I certainly wouldn't uh, be against going there to buy some show prospects. So with that being said, obviously I know you guys obviously live here in the city, but I know you still have some involvement with the cattle business. Got some donor cows that you guys are actually working on. I know you've got an exciting set of ET calves this year that uh, I know you guys are excited about. Uh, if you care to expound upon those and what you guys got and uh, where we can expect to see those this fall. I know we won't see them here in the city. Got to be a little <laughs> ways out to, to check them out, but certainly seen some pictures and it looks like uh, doing some good things there. At Beers. At yeah, I just, I've tried to stick to my roots and own a couple of cows. Uh, um, I keep them out there at uh, Brad White's JBR calves out in Iowa. Um, he's been real good to me and, and helped me out and uh, putting some embryos in. It looks like we maybe have one steer that uh, looks pretty good. Um, I pray every night that it is. Um, but uh, another cow that uh, I own with my nephew out by uh, Hinkley, Illinois that uh, we got a decent steer from, from, from her, and uh, honestly, it's, uh, you know, hopefully 10 years from now we will be watching this video, and maybe I'll have more than two cows, uh, but uh, again, it's, it's kind of just a little bit of a little hobby, and 
hopefully it'll turn into to something better in the future. Vice, what is the, the day-to-day sort of operations for you here in the office? What are some of the things that uh, you guys usually do on a daily basis uh, on a normal <coughs> Wednesday like today uh, here in Chicago? What's Matt O'Donnell usually doing here in the office? Um, you know, get here early, try to anyway. Um, and honestly, just uh, a lot of it's, it's, it's uh, you know, servicing our clients. Um, you know, we try to meet you know, one or two clients a week or, or even three or four clients a week um, and help them, you know, whatever issues that they're dealing with. Um, at the same time, trying to find some actionable ideas that, can, that we can put in portfolios. So we spend some time there and then a little bit of time you know, trying to find, you know, new clients. Um, I think that's, you know, each and every day is not the same, uh, but, uh, you know, today's a special day with you in town, so I didn't get as much done uh, as I probably should have, but I appreciate that. Um, but um, uh, that's kind of, that's fundamentally it. It's, it's all about the client. I mean, I think that's in any financial advisor's um, MO is, is doing what's best for the client, and uh, that's what we try to do every single day. Right. Uh, as you sort of talk about your day-to-day operations, uh, we got a chance to walk into your office there a little while ago and uh, I sort of asked you a question. There's a unique picture sitting there of you guys, I think, with that uh, show steer. Uh, just in general, obviously being in this business, it's so different than livestock in general, but uh, what are some of those experiences as you grew up in 4-H and FFA sort of helped build uh, your abilities today to handle the situations that you deal with on a daily basis. Uh, obviously, it seems like so many people always speak about their fun experiences in 4-H, and I thought the, what you shared with me there was a very unique about what that picture sort of means to you and how it helps you on a daily basis here and, and what yeah. you do now. Um, when I first started my career right out of college, I uh, uh, heard you know, a very uh, um, uh, successful presenter talk about certain things that you should do in life or certain things that you should have in your office to, to help you along the day to build your business. And, and as many people, I, I, I kind of look at myself as a business owner, uh, you know, my clientele, I had to build each client one by one, um, is, you know, there's some tough days. Well, um, I graduated from a very small high school. It was, I think there was less than 25 kids in my class. Went to Illinois, and the first class was 1,200 people. So, a little bit of a culture shock, a little bit homesick, and uh, I think a weekend or two weeks in, we had a show. I think in Springfield that I went to, and all I wanted to do that whole day was just tell my brothers that I didn't want to go back to school. Um, I mean, even now it gives me some chills of of just how close and how frustrated and homesick and fearful I was. And uh, luckily, I, I held in and, and uh, held on. Held on, didn't cry as I was, you know, fitting the steer or helping my brothers fit the steer, and went back to school and, and loved every minute of it, every minute of it thereafter. Um, so I keep a picture. We actually had Champion Hereford that uh, that day, and I keep a picture of me and my three brothers and my nephew showing the steer, and it just every once in a while you're having that rough day kind of look up there and be like, ah, it's not as bad as that, so it helps you get through. Right, so I've built it to look back at those experiences. It seems like from everything that I've seen, a lot of great people had a chance to, to talk to and meet over the last year or so doing a lot of this stuff. It seems like uh, so many of the building blocks of success are built in these kind of programs, and it seems like it's uh, certainly very worthwhile to be involved. I guess I don't know if you care to expound on uh, just in general, as you might have said, what it meant to you to be involved in that kind of uh, um, opportunity as a used to... Uh, to, to build your future today. Yeah, I mean, uh, I I wasn't all that successful showing. I I mean, looking back though, I, I felt I did enough to to feel proud about it. Um, but I just remember, you know, the night before you take the steer to the fair was, I think, the ultimate. Uh, you know, uh, two of my brothers really helped me and did all the clipping, and it was kind of right the right before they showed up was. You know, the culmination of all my work of taking care, you know, of these steers, and uh, um, I just look back at that so fondly and, and cherish those memories of uh, just the the excitement that you get. You know, obviously a steer looks so much better after you clip it, and then you know, and then you get to the show, and and, and winning the show is awesome. But uh, I think uh, 
what I took away was not necessarily you know, winning the trophy. It was just, I don't know, just giving some accolades of the hard work that I put in there. And I think, uh, you know, um, you know, some of the interviews that you've done and other interviews that I've seen of, of a successful showman now, a lot of those guys weren't, you know, winning all the shows when they were kids. They're winning them now, but just, uh, just that hard work, you know, it's, you know, one of my role models growing up was Michael Jordan, right? Um, and, you know, he got cut from his sophomore basketball team. And that was one of my other goals was to play in college and, and uh, NBA. Obviously, I didn't grow as much as I wanted to. But, uh, you know, we all kind of have setbacks. And uh, if you just kind of push through that, I think they motivate you, you know, throughout life. And, uh, um I just, I, I, you know, I, I can still remember, you know, a couple of stories of just so being so excited to go to a fair. So, right. Obviously, I think it's like you said, uh, had an opportunity to to, to talk to Wade Rogers, and uh, certainly one of the most successful uh, steer traders in the business, and I believe he's seen everyone's county fair. So, <laughs> he's probably won as many shows as anybody in the business. And uh, I think I, I gathered from what way he talked, and sort of the same way you're saying that uh, that. Uh, Disappointment on some levels developed so much drive and uh, work ethic that uh, that uh, pushed him and obviously yourself to to new highs. That, uh, like you said, sometimes it's not always about winning that trophy. I guess it's about the future and uh, building those uh, skills to be successful in the future. Uh, with that being said, obviously, Matt, I know you're usually stuck here in the office quite a bit, so we're hoping to catch you there at the Illinois Beef Expo. But I know you had an obligation. Uh, anywhere we might be able to catch you down the road that uh, we can maybe get you and talk about some cattle here in the flesh or here in the, on the 33rd floor here at your office, uh, about as far as we can get from the, the, the farmland. But uh, certainly uh, hope to see you down the road. Anywhere we might see you at the Illinois State Fair or any other events we might catch you at. Yeah, I'd love to. You know, I always love uh, you know, going to the shows and, um, you know, I try to um, go to some of the local county, county shows and try to... Um, you know, buy a calf for auction or something like that. But uh, um, I'd love to, love to get down to Illinois State Fair and show you my uh, cattle judging skills. And you know, pick the top three and see which one does. I mean, I'll probably do better than than what you would. But um, <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Uh, absolutely, love to love to go down to Springfield and uh, spend some time with you. Definitely, I think we're, we're hoping to get back there to the Illinois State for maybe you come up there and help us uh, keep it going, and uh, maybe we can talk about the Bears a little bit. Uh, I know uh, last year we got rave reviews for talking about the Bears and uh, some of our Saturday Night Live skit uh, impersonations, but uh, might as well ask you, I guess, any thoughts on uh, the Bulls situation with Derrick Rose going down? I know maybe a somber heart right now here in the city. A lot of high hopes for the Bulls to uh, yeah. the finals and bring home the trophy again, but... Uh, a little rebuilding, same with the Bears. Uh, Forte's not in the best situation. Uh, what's the what's the sports uh, feel right now in Chicago? Um, I know as much uh, about the Bears as uh, you know what direction Facebook is going. But uh, <laughs> um, you know, I'm lucky enough to to go on with a couple of buddies and we, and we get Bears tickets um, and just love the game and. And for Derek Rose to do that it was just heartbreaking for us, uh, but I think he'll be back. Um, but uh, Bears, you know, that's one awesome thing about Chicago is, you know, you have the Cubs and White Sox, and we kind of, the plant fans split, but everybody in Chicago is a Bears fan. Um, and we actually, you know, we should go to Dickus tonight, maybe uh, see if Mike's there, see if we can get him talking about some cattle, maybe... Uh, Buy some executive sires from you or something like that. Definitely, if we get Mike Ditko in here, I think it uh, could take us to a whole new stratosphere. Uh, with that being said, uh, he certainly uh, would be a great interview. Maybe certainly the, the follow to Billy Sims Heisman Trophy winner, get a Hall of Famer and a Super Bowl champion. That'd be pretty unique. Maybe we can make that happen. Maybe make a few calls and uh, get him on yeah. there. But uh, with that being said, obviously, um, I know you guys are uh, very integral in helping us continue to uh, do what we're doing. Uh, just in general, can you just tell us your thoughts on um, where you sort of see the livestock industry going? I know obviously you said you're a little bit involved, but uh, 
Any thoughts in general on uh, what you might expect to see over the next few years? Uh, you know, I, I can actually kind of thought about this question uh, the other day, and um, you know, I, I think the show cattle industry, I think, is just exploding. You know, some of the things that you're doing, you know, uh, I think it's Jeff Schroeder at cattle.com is doing some great things. I'm, I'm lucky enough to know Brad Hook real well, and I think he's, you know, pushed the envelope in, in, in a lot of different areas. Um, and, and so I think the the um, the level of communication, getting the word out on, on who's doing well or or you know where what cattle are working, I think is is, is top notch. Um, and what you're you know I, I think and so all that level of communication, I think it, it get more people involved. You know, um, and I think it's a good business. I, I, I you know it's tough business. You know the people that you know, are successful, have been doing it for a long time, know the trout snares. Just in my little short history of owning a couple of cows, I know how difficult it can be, but it's so rewarding, you know, the, you know, this little picture I emailed you is, is, uh, you know, just so fun. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of it, you know, I, I think uh, there's good people in it, good people involved, and uh, I think if we can just, uh, you know, Keep uh, keep it on the I don't know if up and up is the right word, but just you know get more people involved. You know I, I think the cattle show industry is it's I think it's less about who wins Louisville. It's more about how many people show up for their county fair, and I I don't know uh, you know how we do that necessarily, uh, but. Uh, you know I never I think I I don't know if I I think I showed at Louisville once. You know so. Um, but uh, I, I think the, the show cattle, and, and I'm glad to be a part of it. And I think what you're doing is great. You know, for me to be included in some of the people that you talked about, um, you know, with all the work that you did last weekend with Cream of the Crop and Christy Collins, I think it, it is great. And glad to be a part of it, man. As uh, Matt said, lots of uh, really good people in this business, and he's certainly one that uh, we're very fortunate to work with. We really appreciate uh, his continued support of Livestock World as a corporate sponsor. As we said, we're hoping to get him down to the Illinois State Fair if he's available to join us in the booth. Uh, give a little color commentary there uh, during the steer show if we can uh, make that happen. Uh, and uh, we're looking forward to that opportunity to hopefully be back there at the Illinois State Fair. I don't have Fair. to wear my suit, do I? No, uh, we don't have to wear suits, so we usually are off camera for that All event. Right, good, uh, good. But so we might get you down there in the makeup ring and uh, grab some folks down there and uh, uh, see what's going on down there, but uh, no suits, uh, if that's, if that's okay, you might not be used to it, that might be foreign to you, but uh, as we said, once again, thanks to Matt O'Donnell here from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, uh, his support uh, is certainly very integral to our uh, development of Livestock World, and uh, if you have any questions for uh, Matt O'Donnell, you can contact him through our website, uh, just click on the Morgan Stanley link, and uh, you can get all his contact information. Once again, I'm Chris Turner, this is Livestock World, signing off here in Chicago, Illinois, on the 33rd floor of the AT&T building. And uh, once again, thanks to Matt O'Donnell. Hey, thanks, Chris. Thanks.